Hello students of YouTube, welcome to my lecture. Today's lecture is going to be about gaming laptop laws. Now, what are gaming laptop laws? Well, gaming laptop laws are laws that people don't follow, and I end up with a bench full of gaming laptops that I need to fix. This is very important because it's back to school time, so you might be buying your kid a gaming laptop, or you might be buying yourself a gaming laptop. The point of this lesson is so that you don't buy one without preparing all these- ah! So that you don't buy one without preparing for all these lessons. <laughs> to demonstrate firsthand of all these lessons, I'm going to use this Alienware MR15... 15, 15, this thing. I'm going to use that thing to demonstrate all these lessons and help me out. So I'm going to be repairing this while I talk about these. Keep in mind, all of these laptops are gaming laptops that are here for a reason that is not their own fault. It's not their fault. Now first, first lesson, keep it clean. I do that very gently. Keep it clean. That's the number one rule of your laptop, and this is why. Now you've probably found my channel in the first place due to the eclectic collection of diseases that I've shown throughout the years, and it's not a coincidence that nearly every broken gaming laptop that ends up in my shop is caked with 12 layers of filth and bodily fluids like on today's Alienware. I mean, ugh. Because if you're not willing to do the bare minimum of cleaning the outside of the laptop, there's no way you're cleaning the most important part, which is the heatsink vents. Because when those get clogged with pubes and swamp, Gooch, especially when you use your laptop on a bed, the fans can't exhaust all that hot air away from the CPU and GPU, and your laptop slowly cooks itself to death. Which is why I say, use your laptop on a bed, and your GPU will soon be dead. But even letting the keyboard get this dirty can lead to a massive repair bill, as the debris can end up puncturing the rubber membrane under the keycap, and forcing that key, or the entire keyboard, to stop working. And because these laptops all have fused keyboards now, that means having to buy an entire top case and transferring every single component like I'll be having to do here with this MSI. A very labor-intensive job that costs a lot of money. So if you or your child has not so good hygiene, mm, you might want to pass on a gaming laptop. Next up, heat is hell. Heat is hell. Working here is hell. Heat is even worse. A gaming laptop isn't just something like a MacBook or a ThinkPad where you can just buy it and expect it to last, because it requires routine maintenance, specifically with the cooling system. The most common reason gaming laptops end up in my repair shop is because they're overheating, or a component has failed most likely due to long-term exposure to overheating and high temps. And not only because the customer didn't follow the previous lesson, but because thermal paste by itself is something that must be replaced every few years on these high-performance machines as a part of their routine maintenance. Not only will the performance benefit, but you'll also decrease the potential failure rate of something on the board. Because the heat from packing so much tech into such a small space is exactly why gaming laptops have a higher failure rate than desktops. In the case of this Alienware today, the RAM module failed most likely due to the temps it's been exposed to for god knows how long, which means I need to resolve the temperature issue before another component fails. And that means changing the thermal paste and cleaning those vents. Fortunately for my customer here, the RAM is replaceable, but 9 out of 10 times when a component fails from temperature issues, it's something that's soldered to the motherboard. So you either have to send it in to a micro soldering specialist and pay big bucks to get it fixed, if they can even fix it, or pay to replace the entire motherboard, which may cost more than the entire device is worth, and will leave you without your device for weeks. Which is fine if your laptop is just a toy for gaming, but if you use it for work or school, it would be catastrophic. And that brings me to the next law. Tool or toy? I'm not talking about Lupe here, I'm talking about a computer. Do you mainly use your laptop as a tool for getting work done? Is a desktop out of the question because you need something portable? And would it be the end of the world if it broke? Because if you need something portable, reliable, easy, and cheap to fix, a gaming laptop is not for you. Just get a framework laptop. But if you need a little more oomph, then you'd be better off purchasing something that's powerful, reliable, and easy to repair like a Lenovo ThinkPad P series. If you just need something for school or work, grab a used ThinkPad T14 or X1 Carbon. 
and if you need a balance of both, grab a used T14 with an AMD APU, because the integrated Radeon graphics can play most AAA games on medium settings at 1080p. But if you just want a portable toy that can play games and watch 8K po Pokemon in your car before work, then buy a gaming laptop. It won't be as devastating if it crashed and you were without it for a few weeks. Just make sure to either have a backup laptop or to get an extended warranty if possible, because as soon as that original warranty is over, well, you'll be dealing with our next lesson. After warranty woes, not to be confused with after warranty ho Because this great country refuses to pass any meaningful right to repair laws, after warranty support all comes down to the company and how many f**ks they give. And it's incredibly important to know what support they offer before buying a gaming laptop. Because unlike Framework, that of course sells every replacement and upgrade part you could ever need, nearly every gaming laptop manufacturer refuses to sell parts directly to the consumer. The most important part being a replacement battery. Besides Dell and Alienware, because they're generally good at selling replacement batteries, because that is the one thing guaranteed to need replacing after a few years. And though Amazon and eBay is flooded with aftermarket bullshit parts, nothing beats a genuine battery. But all this work is making me tired. So Lupe and I pack up and migrate to where there's good coffee and free Wi-Fi, which we only feel safe connecting to because we have Private Internet Access, today's video sponsor. Private Internet Access is a virtual private network app, or VPN for short. And for those of you that don't know, a VPN is an app that hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. So even if a hacker is on the same Wi-Fi network as you trying to steal your valuable info, they won't be able to see your real IP or intercept your precious data. And along with being able to use an unlimited number of devices at once, PIA is available for every platform you see here and more. Combine all this with a no-log policy and and it's a no-brainer that I've been personally using PIA for over a decade, which is why I've given it the title of the greatest VPN that's ever lived. And now I get to share it with you, because using my code below, you can get an 83% discount on PIA, which is only $2.03 a month. And even better, you get four extra months for free. Just check out the link in the description and start protecting yourself today. But where were we? Oh yeah, replacement parts. Now if the manufacturer doesn't sell parts, you have to research how hard they are to get. Because if replacement parts are hard to come by, that means you have to go straight through the manufacturer for any repairs. And doing any repairs through the manufacturer means paying big money and experiencing a big hassle having to wait a billion years for service. But what if you just fix it yourself? Well, that's our next law. And lastly, my favorite. Learn to repair or prepare to pay me. Because if you can't fix your own computer, you need somebody to fix it. And God forbid you send it to the manufacturer like MSI, Asus, Lenovo, another MSI, Alienware. Because you know what they're gonna tell you? Get fucked. Learning to fix your own tech can be fun, but you shouldn't use your $3,000 laptop as a guinea pig to test your skills. And as you've seen by me taking apart this Alienware to clean the vents and replace the thermal paste, some routine maintenance jobs are not easy. So if you don't have the confidence to try something like this yourself, you'll have to pay someone like the greatest technician that's ever lived to do it for you. And don't get me wrong, I like money, but I like helping people more. And the more people that can fix their own tech and spend their money on necessities to make their lives better, the happier I am. And with that said, I'm happy you made it this far, and I hope my lessons in gaming laptop law will help you purchase one in the future, or not purchase one. But leave me a comment and let me know how your gaming laptop experience has been, and I appreciate if you'd subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Or if you think this video sucks, well, just let me know.